Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Star Wars The Mandalorian 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Now today we are taking a look at none other than the deluxe version of Din Djarin in his chrome Beskar armor. And uh, Grogu's in there as well. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it's kinda busy. There's a lot going on here. Front and center, Chrome Beskar Mando carrying the weight of the Star Wars franchise on his shoulders. I am so sorry. Then down below, little baby Grogu and Boba's helmet. On the wraparound banner, we do have another product shot with Din not wearing his bucket. And on the side of the box, who would have guessed, another product shot. On the back, all of the warnings and legal info. On the inside, that's where Hot Toys keeps the real artwork and this image is stunning. It's a full body shot of Bando and he's on Tatooine. If only I had the space to display this image because I really like it. Now, I've never seen Chrome Beskar Mando in person, so my first impressions, they're going to be genuine. Not that they ever aren't, but even more so this time. And those first impressions, oh, they are so good. This guy is practically gleaming. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, Hot Toys, you all clearly love this sand footprint display base and for the life of me I can't figure out why. Up front we have Star Wars The Mandalorian on an etched metal nameplate and up top, a little bit of a diorama. Now, the reason I don't like this is the footprints. Because when you have him on the base, you have to have the feet here. I'm never a fan of forcing someone to display a collectible one way, especially when it's as poseable as this guy is. At the very least, it's painted and sculpted well. The texture looks good. Up top, we have a regular crotch grabber. If you do opt for the deluxe version of Chrome Mando, you also get this thing. It's the swoop bike handlebar and some of Boba Fett's armor. Now, it doesn't come like this. Some assembly is required. Follow the instructions. It's not that tricky. You do have to thread on these little strings and some of them aren't super secure. I'm looking at this one right here. It likes to slide off from time to time. The top piece is fully sculpted, including this middle section, which I could have sworn was fabric. It looks so real. These bags, though, are real fabric. They're nicely padded, so they look full. Full of what? I don't know. They're also slightly weathered on the surface. This one is circular, whereas the other is square. There's also a little clip and a D-ring on Mando's jetpack, so you can attach it and it nicely dangles. As for Boba Fett's jetpack, it is stunning. There's dirt and grime on it, there's paint chipping, and a little bit of metallic silver in the middle. You can also rotate the thrusters, and if you did have a missile, you could pop it in. It is missing, because that's how it was in the show. Boba Fett's helmet is detailed on the inside, very nicely painted and quite well weathered. Plus, his rangefinder is still articulated. If you wanted to, you could potentially have someone wear this armor, although now that we're getting a Cobb Vanth, I don't know who would. For me, that someone was going to be Cobb Vanth, but thanks to Hot Toys, now I don't have to bother. These things can just dangle on that handlebar forever. Now, for a sneak preview of the chrome finish on Mando, it's his jetpack. There are some oil stain washes in the crevices. We've seen this sculpt before with the 1.0. It looks pretty much identical. Except this time, it's chrome. On the inside, we do have this foam pad, so fingers crossed when we pop it on him, there's no scratching. Now, the one big difference this time is the little D-ring. It's not ideal, it looks kinda ugly, but at the very least, I guess it's on the back, so you don't really have to see it. They have retained the blue tinging around the thrusters, though, because as the jetpack is working, the metal's getting superheated, there would be a little bit of discoloration. However, unfortunately, there are no blast effects. I don't know why. Maybe Hot Toys were worried when you're plugging the blast effects in, you'd chip the chrome finish, but 
would have been in the inside of the thrusters, so it wouldn't have been all that obvious. For stuff we've seen before, like the Ambon Face Pulse Rifle here, I'll try and be relatively quick in the interest of time. Now, we can remove the sight, as we could with the original, so he can be scooping out some enemies. You can also open up the back portion, so he can load the rifle. The main body is gunmetal, there are some gold sections, and a lot of silver dry brushing. The back portion does have a wood grain print, it looks good. Then around the front, for the pitchfork section, there's some discoloration, just like the jetpack. Although this one is a lot more severe. We've got yellow, to purple, to blue, and at the end, back to silver. Now, we don't get the electricity effects that we got previously, but technically he didn't really use this rifle a ton in Season 2 anyway, I'm just glad we got it at all. Something that he did use a lot though is his blaster pistol. We do have, once again, silver dry brushing on the gunmetal body, couple of gold sections, and brown for the handle. A new accessory this time is the Beskar Spear, and this thing is really long. Now, unfortunately, it's not chrome. It is painted in this bright metallic silver, it is shinier than Beskar Mando 1.0, but I still think this should have been chrome. Up the top, the tip is a little bit prickly, so please be careful. We do have a way of holstering this on Mando, and I'll show you how that works a little bit later on. When it comes to effect pieces, we actually get quite a few. We do get his grappling line, the rod section is made of metal, but the top piece is plastic and it feels a little bit fragile, so please be careful. Then for the flamethrower, we've seen this before. The bottom is flat and the top a little bit more lively, which looks pretty real, especially in pictures. It's cast in translucent plastic, it's darker towards the tip, and a little bit more lighter blue towards the ignition source. I really like the way this looks. I'm really struggling not to just gush over everything because I like the way this looks too. It's the whistling birds, and this effect piece was awesome with the 1.0, but... It's even better this time. The little darts are painted in the same chrome finish as the armor, and the little dart projector looks awesome. There's a ton of dirt and grime, and don't forget, all of this is modular. You can either go with this piece, or you can swap on the pre-shot darts. I'll show you how it works when we get the figure out here. I like to try and make sure I'm not repeating myself, but the longer these accessory segments go, the more I struggle. I don't know what to tell you, I'm only human. Now we do get the little detonator, and it's detailed beautifully. We've got multiple different little buttons, translucent sections, and a handle that you can use to have off Mando, and even the back is scratched and weathered. We do get the torch, specific to Season 2, and the vibro blade, which unfortunately we don't get to see a ton of. Oh, hello there, Darksaber. Yes, no longer do you have to pick up Moff Gideon. This is no longer an exclusive accessory. You get Chrome Mando, you get a Darksaber. It's painted in glossy black. There are some silver sections, plus some gunmetal. Down below, there's a D-ring, so you can maybe hang it from Mando's belt. We'll find out. You can also remove the emitter section and plug in the Darksaber's blade. Now, the blade is quite long, and it's a very interesting shape, but it's actually accurate to the show. It's quite thin and flexible. Once again, a word of warning, be careful. These can be a little bit flimsy. The blade is painted well in glossy black, with some speckling of lightning and white paint along the edges. Wait, Justin, bring it back, talk about the dark saber more. I will, we'll give it to Mando and do some poses later on, just to see what that looks like. Now, we also get a pre-posed Grogu, Nothing new, we've seen this little guy before. His head is on a ball joint, so you can move it around if you so choose, but his arm is fixed in position. The paint applications in the ears, for the skin, for the big glossy eyes, and for the robes, really well done. The texture is also Super HD. But is it just me, or is this getting a little bit old? I would have liked a fully articulated Grogu, because these mini statues, they don't really cut the mustard for me. While we are on the subject of Grogu, you also get his bag. Now, the bag is this very thick weave. It almost doesn't look like proper scaled-down 1-6 scale fabric, but as a bag to hold Grogu, okay, it gets the job done. The strap does have some sewn-in details and panels, and it drapes well. You'll see this on him, I promise. Saving the best for last, maybe, is the Din Djarin head sculpt. This 
for most people, is worth the price of admission alone. The likeness to Pedro Pascal is absolutely there. I dig the expression with the furrowed brow and the paint applications, they are second to none. The skin texture, the five o'clock shadow, it's all there. The hair is a separate sculpted piece, so there's a little bit of depth, including around the back for his spikies. Now, I thought this was a little bit of a mistake in the show. The wardrobe department didn't have time to fix his hair, but Hot Toy said, no, no, he looked this way in the show, so in one six scale, he does as well. And of course, we will be trying this head sculpt out on the figure. And lastly, a full array of hands. We do get the usual suspects, open palm hands, closed fists, and trigger finger hands, but two new ones as well. For either thumbs up, or spear holding, or dark saber wielding, it's up to you. The reason I can tell they're new is the texture is way better. Hot Toys, you couldn't help yourselves, you added a ton more texture here. The leather actually looks like leather, whereas on these original sculpts, they're a lot smoother. We also have some added detail on the palm, whereas with the 1.01s, it's not present. Not ideal, I would have loved a full new array of hands, but two new ones, it's still a good thing. What we are going to do now, though, is get Chrome Beskarmando himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. I can already tell you that I am so freaking happy. As a Mando fan, as a Beskar Mando fan, this guy is right up my alley. They've pretty much taken all of the good stuff from the 1.0 and copy and pasted it here. He's got the padded fat suit that bulks him up just a little, but doesn't sacrifice too much in the way of articulation. Really good, strong proportions and a full fabric flight suit. That's unfortunately Great, I have thoughts. Now, the improvements, they're twofold. Number one, the Season 2 armor. You have a brand new thigh plate and a brand new knee pad. The second is, you can guess it, the chrome. This guy is beautiful. The way the light bounces off it, the dirt and grime on the surface, which I know is controversial. I didn't think this guy was going to be a big quantum leap of the original, but... I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me, it is. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the helmet first. Now, back in the day when we got this helmet mold the first time with Durasteel 1.0, I was very happy. I liked the finish, I liked the shape, and I liked the size. Then we got the same helmet again with Beskar 1.0, and again with Durasteel 2.0, and finally one more time with this guy. Does that mean I'm sick of the mold and it's tired and boring? No, of course not. It's just as awesome as it was day one. I love the crisp edges and it's the perfect shape and size. It's not too big and it's not too small. This time though, it looks even better because it's chrome. It's super shiny, it's very metallic and there's some dirt and grime on the surface. Some people don't like the dirt and grime, but I do. It just adds a little bit more detail, some visual interest on an otherwise very chrome helmet. Around the back, you do have the vent, and don't forget, on the side, you can add the torch. And that looks something like this, which is a cool look, don't get me wrong. It's added some asymmetry back to the helmet, kind of like Boba Fett's rangefinder. It's very Season 2 specific, and it's something different. Although, it's not for me, I prefer the classic look. When you are trying to install the torch though, be very, very careful. You do have to pry off the ear and apply a little bit of pressure, and you don't want to scratch the chrome. Follow the instructions and take your time. Also, just before, I forgot to mention the visor, how could I? It's a super high gloss black plastic, and it's a separate piece on a different plane. So when you look at it from the side, or even from the front, there's a little bit of depth there. If you are wondering what he looks like without his helmet on though, face reveal time, Din, he's in so much trouble with the armorer and the rest of the Mandos, cause taking off your bucket, this is not the way. The way to take it off though is very simple. You pull off the entire neck piece and the helmet all in one. Then you slide on the Pedro Pascal head sculpt into the collar. Now the collar does ride rather high, but it needs to. Cause I don't know about y'all, but it kinda looks like his neck is a little bit long. And yes, I have pushed the head sculpt all the way down. That being said, 
I still love the way this looks. It looks just like Pedro Pascal from the last episode of Mandalorian Season 2. He's got that somber, almost sad expression, and the likeness is on point. So, let me know what you think. How will you rock this figure, or how should I? Helmet on, or helmet off? Comment down below. I wouldn't be surprised if some of y'all were wondering, hey, can you use the Pedro head sculpt on the Dura Steel or Beskar Mando 1.0, just like I was? But unfortunately, the soft answer is no. Why did I say it's a soft answer? Well, it's probably possible, but not without some modding. Now, the neck is articulated, meaning it's removable. But I even removed the suit all the way down to the neck connector, I couldn't remove it. I kind of felt like it was going to break, so I stopped. If you want to do some modding though, like I said, it's potentially possible to combine these two, or this head sculpt, with the 1.0 Beskar. Around the back, Mando has his cape on, cause why the heck not, it's badass as hell. And kinda suave at the same time, think Lando. Down below we've got some tatters and a bunch of holes. Plus, this time, it's wired. We have a wire along the bottom so you can make some very natural looking pleats, and some wires along the side for billowing in the wind. I was worried that it was going to be big and bulky and cumbersome at the shoulders, but as you can see, it isn't. To attach the jetpack, it's really simple. You just want to move the cape out of the way, exposing this super chrome backplate, and there are magnets inside. We also have magnets inside the jetpack, and it's padded, so fingers crossed, no scratching. And to attach it, are you ready? Simply pop it on. It magnetizes in place and sits in position. Now, because the chrome surface is so slick on the backplate, it slides around a little. So when it comes to posing, I would suggest dialing in the pose first and attaching the jetpack later. In order to attach the spear, it's also very simple. Not as simple as magnets, though but maybe it should have been. Now, in the show, the spear kind of sits here, right near the jetpack. They could have installed a magnet in the jetpack and another in the spear, and it could have holstered in position. But instead, they didn't do that. They went with this string and clip combo. Now, you have to lift up the cape and slide on the string so it sits over his neck. Once again, follow the instructions. And once you've done that, you can pop the spear in. From the front, the illusion is complete and it looks accurate, but I don't know, something about magnets I think would have been better. We're still around the back, yes we are, for one more thing, the Ambon Phase Pulse Rifle. Now it holsters in the exact same way as Beskar 1.0 and Durasteel Mando. Technically, this is more of a Season 1 thing, because in Season 2, I'm pretty sure he loses this when the Razor Crest blows up. Now, in order to strap it on, pretty straightforward. You plug this piece in around the front, still using that teeny tiny little peg, Hot Toys, why? And around the back, there's a strap and magnet. Now, the strap goes through this cleverly cut hole in the cape, and simply snaps over the top to hold this in position. Back around the front, it's not all good news. Unfortunately, there's just one thing that Hot Toys can't seem to get right, and they don't know why. His flight suit is grey. It's supposed to be brown. Even in Season 1, when he switched to the Beskar armor, it was a brown flight suit on silver armor. But here, once again, they went with this charcoal. Now, all of the stitch sections are accurate. You've got the quilted sections, you've got the various different lines, and multiple different layers with the brown and the grey, and this kind of flak jacket piece, plus some dirt and grime there as well. You also have more dirt and grime in the high traffic areas, for the elbows and up here above the thigh plates, but still, it kind of doesn't excuse why the flight suit isn't brown, it's just not accurate to the show. Some people will argue till they're blue in the face that it's not supposed to be brown, but go and check the show, it is. Now the chrome armor does kind of help me forget about the inaccurate flight suit, cause it's so lush. I know I've gushed about the chrome, but the sculpt is really good and that finish is beautiful. Now, the dirt and grime is still here, but from a distance in the collection, it just adds that touch more detail. If it was all chrome, it might look a little bit boring. You also have the straps and harnesses and buckles, plus a real working holster. You can also remove these canisters for his Ambon Phase Pulse Rifle. We do have that hook, and if you're wondering what that's for, 
Was the snap transition necessary? Yeah, actually it was. This piece is so fiddly to install. You slide on the detonator and this piece is moving at the same time you're trying to slide it on. Plus the ambient phase canisters, they're pushing it down. Now, technically this isn't an officially sanctioned display method, but if you wanted to, you could drape the Dark Saber there too. On the other side, you do have his mines, and one of them is removable. And it likes to remove itself all the time. When you're trying to pose him, if you just touch it, it will go flying. But at the very least, you can remove one if you want to have him placing it on something or someone. We can't forget about the effect pieces because they're so cool. You clip the flamethrower on and when you do, it lines up with the nozzle. So it looks like it's actually working. Plus, because of the translucent plastic, it glows really well. If you don't want to go with the flamethrower though and you want to swap it out for the grappling line, that's also pretty straightforward. You want to wedge this line in between his suit and the gauntlet and job done. Now, unfortunately, for some weird reason, Hot Toys forgot to paint his little screen. On the 1.0 version of Beskar Mando, you can see the red lines, but on the new one, they're just not there. On the other side, we can't forget about the whistling birds, and don't worry, I wasn't going to. In order to install either the effect piece or the new front panel, you first of all want to remove that back piece, then you can remove the little front guy. There's a teeny tiny little post that it plugs into. Now, on camera, this is kind of fiddly, but in person, it's a little bit easier. Now we have the slightly exposed whistling birds, but we're not here for that, we want to see the effect piece. You remove the back piece in the exact same way, then take off the front piece and bring this one in. I'm pretty sure you can see where this is going. It snaps in position and now he's firing them and in the collection I'm very tempted to go with this as a permanent display option. Coming down to the legs and the grey and accurate flight suit, I am so sorry I'll stop mentioning it but it is. It's all fabric and there's a little bit of dirt and grime up top, but the rest of it is very clean. Now, quite surprisingly, most of the newly sculpted pieces are down here. We have a brand new sculpted thigh plate. Compared to the Beskar 1.0, it's entirely different. This is actually the thigh plate from Q90, the droid from the prison episode in Season 1. It shouldn't really be chrome, but... I can't fault the finish, I really like it, even though it's slightly inaccurate. Call me a hypocrite, because I keep going on and on about the grey flight suit, I'm aware. He also has a brand new knee plate, which is actually borrowed from the Durasteel 1.0. What happened in the show that caused him to stop wearing this, I don't know. For some reason, when he switched to the Beskar armor, it wasn't there. Maybe the costuming department stuffed up? Not the first time that would happen to a Star Wars production, and for continuity, they just ran with it. Because in Season 2, it's back. It's well painted, there's some dirt and grime on the surface, done in dark blue, and some chrome for the little dart launchers. He also has an asymmetrical design for his boot guards, and they're a split-cut boot for maximum range of motion. The sculpt work is good, it's all sculpted, not pleather, thank you Hot Toys. And you can remove these canisters if you so choose. They're wedged in there, but they are removable, trust me. On the underside, some fully sculpted and painted tread, but no dirt and grime. Kickstarting the comparison segment, this is where the fun begins. See, I know my Star Wars references, Mando, Star Wars. Anyway, moving on, on the left, Chrome Beskar Mando, and on the right, Durasteel 1.0. They're the same exact height, because... Spoiler alert, they're on the same body. They have similar padding, so they look just as beefy as one another. The difference, though, is number one, Chrome Mando is um, Chrome, and number two, he's Beskar. Whereas Durasteel is that more ragtag look that we had at the beginning of the show. Next up, Beskar 1.0, next to Beskar 2.0. And there is a very stark difference here. I was really happy with the 1.0. I thought, ah, how good could the Chrome be? Surely it's not worth the upgrade. But now that I see them standing together, maybe it is. We will be doing a much closer comparison in just a second. Oh, it's happening. And rightly so. Finally, we can try the Din Djarin head sculpt on the transport trooper body. Is it compatible? Will it fit? Will it look goofy? Well... 
we're about to see. Now, Transport Trooper, he's a little bit shorter than Chromando. Should he be? Well, if it was Din Djarin, no, probably not. But it's not Din Djarin, it's a regular old Transport Trooper. So they used a generic Stormtrooper body, hence he's a little bit shorter. If you wanted to go that one step further towards accuracy, you could always strip down a Mando and use that body on your Transport Trooper, but for me, I can fudge it, I'm not gonna go that far. You're either thinking one of two things right now, will this segment ever end, or can it keep going, we wanna see so much more. If you're thinking the latter, well, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. On the right, the repainted version of Boba, this looks great too. Mando is ever so slightly taller than Boba, but some height difference in the collection is always a good thing. At least I think so. Does anyone remember that scene in Season 2 where Boba Fett kicks some serious butt and this was the armor he was wearing? So yeah, I'm more than happy to display these two standing together in the collection. He's bigger and beefier than Repaint Boba, but he's still a little bit shorter than Chrome Mando, so at least it's consistent. Speaking of shorter, so is Bo-Katan. Now I don't really know where I'm going to put Chrome Beskar Mando 2.0, but... This is a viable option as well. Maybe I need another one. Let me know what you think about that down below. Ooh, the big bad from Season 1 and Season 2, Moff Gideon in all his glory. He's also shorter than Chrome Beskar Mando, but he's no slouch. You can tell he's got presence, especially with that Darksaber. Now, I can foresee a display with Mando versus Gideon with the Dark Troopers in the background versus Luke storming down the hallway. That would be sick. And maybe that's what I might do with mine. Dark Troopers, did you say? Why, yes I did. Here we have one, almost like magic. The power of filmmaking. Now, the Dark Trooper is taller than Beskar Mando. Finally, we found someone who is. This looks pretty accurate to me, but I don't know. If the Dark Troopers were a little bit taller, I wouldn't complain. Okay, I think I've covered everyone. Last up is Heavy Mando, but you watch, there'll be one person, I know you're out there, you're gonna comment saying, Hey Justin, you didn't compare him to this figure or this obscure character. If I missed one, I'm sorry. But compared to Heavy Mando, Heavy is a big boy, he dwarfs Crow Mando. And yeah, he did share some screen time with Chrome Mando in Book of Boba Fett, so this is a viable display option. For a zoomed-in comparison, same figures once again, you know Beskar 1.0 on the left and 2.0 on the right. Now, do bear in mind I have modded the flight suit on my 1.0, so it's the accurate brown. So you'll have to try and forget that, because out of the box, it was grey as well, just like the new one. Now, the armor is night and day. The new one is so much shinier and more lustrous and metallic versus the original that kind of looks flat and boring. Originally, I liked the finish, but no more. The new one is the king. Also, the new guy is so much dirtier. I think the logic is he's been wearing the armor all the way to season two and to the end of it, so it's a little bit more filthy. His belt is dirtier, his flight suit is dirtier, even the flak jacket piece compared to the 1.0, which is fresh off the rack, it's completely clean. Now, I am tempted to try and merge these two, brown flight suit, chrome armor, and drape cape from the original. Stay tuned to the channel. I might just try that in a YouTube Shorts review. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy, so I'm going to be a touch more careful. Starting off with the helmet, it's on a double ball peg and an articulated neck. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, great for flight poses, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, unfortunately they're limited by the fat suit. Going forward to there, butterfly joint at the shoulder, it hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, going past 90, plus a regular hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. The torso crunches forward and back, swivels and pivots. The legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, ratcheted double bend at the knee, going way past 90. Then down here, a split-cut boot design with a double ball peg for forward and back and pivot at the ankle. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is the color of the flight suit. Once again, it's gray where it's supposed to be brown. Now, they have added some dirt and grime in certain areas, but 
it's kind of higgledy piggledy. Up here in the elbows, some dirt. Up here underneath the belt, also dirt and grime, but in other areas, it's completely clean. The second annoying thing is the inconsistency between the finish of the chrome pieces and the flat silver spear. Now, in the show, the spear was made of pure Beskar. So in 1.6 scale, I was expecting it to be chrome. Now, I understand maybe they were worried about the paint chipping off as you're sliding it in and out of his hands, but still, I think it should have been chrome. The third annoying thing is another Mando release, another fixed position Grogu. Now, if SH Figure Arts can make a 6-inch fully articulated Grogu with cloth robes, surely you can do it too, Hot Toys. Why is this guy a mini statue? I mean, he looks good, I dig the texture in the paint apps, but fingers crossed one day we get an articulated version. The first cool thing is twofold. Number one, the head sculpt is awesome, it looks just like Pedro Pascal. And number two, it's compatible with the transport trooper body. I was worried that it wasn't going to be, but oh, it is. Now, it's not perfect. Maybe the head sits a little bit too high and it's slightly large for the very slim framed body, but overall, I'm still really happy. And that's why I picked up two transport troopers, so I can display one wearing this head sculpt. The second cool thing is you're not really missing anything here. If you sell your 1.0 Beskar Mando to upgrade to this guy, you have have all of the stuff that he came with, plus a little bit more. The third cool thing is Hot Toys, I am so proud of you, well done, finally you've made a really good cape. I love the fabric, it's very soft and supple, we've got some holes and tatters down below, plus it's wired, which is great for posing. Also, because of those wires, it drapes well over the shoulders and hangs naturally. So you can use it for posing or just have it draping there. It works both ways. Wrapping up on Hot Toys, Chrome Beskar Mando and Grogu from Season 2 of The Mandalorian. Going into this, I was really excited. But I know more than a few collectors that aren't excited, they're really angry. Because the timing of this guy was kind of funky. Let me tell you a story for just a second. Now, when this guy was first announced, it kind of came at a weird time. Hot Toys had only just shipped their batch to the States and it was releasing for the 1.0 Beskar Mando. So people were receiving that one, they were excited, then they open up Facebook and... Oh no, there's a new one, it's a Chrome version, it's way better, what the hell? But in reality, the timing wasn't as close as you might think think. Now, Hot Toys, they're based in Hong Kong. That's their domestic country. So when the 1.0 Beskar Mando was released for them, there was quite some time between the announcement of this guy. They release figures in their own home country a lot earlier than the USA. So they probably weren't thinking when they put this guy up whether or not it had shipped in the US. Not an ideal reason for why it happened, but that's just likely why. Does that make this guy any better or worse? No, I don't think so. Plus, this guy is the Season 2 look, so his armor is different. So you could technically say that you don't really have to get all that upset because your 1.0 is accurate to Season 1. That comment is going to ruffle a few feathers, I understand. At the end of the day, I love this figure, it is awesome. The proportions, the articulation isn't perfect, but it's good enough for me, and he comes with a ton of accessories. And the icing on the cake, of course, is the chrome finish. As soon as you open that box, this guy will start gleaming and glowing and... It will hook you right away. You'll forget all about your woes with the 1.0 version because you'll have sold it. It's long gone. This guy is definitely a worthy upgrade. And I'm even thinking about picking up two. One for the unhelmeted look and one for the helmeted look. One battling Moff Gideon, one with Bo-Katan and the crew. So many options. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you with the next video.